Just letting y'all know that we got a lot of content coming. Let y'all know this right here, the original platform right now for some of that real uncut raw, sh especially coming from the West Coast. Subscribe, click, 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 subscribe. Dub C, CJ Mac Show. What up, C Mac behind the camera? Dub C and CJ. Uh huh. Dub, Dub C and CJ. What you looking at? Dub, Dub C and CJ. Dub C and CJ. Dub C and CJ Mac Show. Welcome back to another Power Pack episode of the Dub C and CJ Mac Show. Once again, I am CJ Mac. And I am the one and only Dub C. What's up, bro, bro? What we got going today? Hey, man, feel good to be back today, C Mac. Yeah. What's up, man? You over there looking fresh, man? Uh, Flying yeah, like yeah, the lenses, I'm, man. I'm just trying to like get the old yeah. player I knew, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you know, know what I'm keep saying? It. I, I think they, I think somebody on the internet said, uh, I'm Unk Player or some, hey, something, something hey, like I that. Love it, I love it. I so love today it. we got another special guest, because huh? everybody's special to me, and I say it every week, right? Yeah, but we are special, This gentleman is super, super special to me, man. Come on now. And he's home team once again. Speak on it. Speak on it. You know, he's, uh, He's absolutely hilarious, man. It's my Same partner. Man. He even taught me how to lift weights one day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, yeah. man. It's Scratch okay, okay. man. Scratch oh, man. Oh. What up, Scratch? Y'all already know what it is, man. You know, I always like to say I'm like the... Uh, I'm like the fine cologne of comedy. You know what I mean? <laughs> fine cologne? Yeah, What's you know. What's the bad cologne? Well, I'm like fine cologne. Like, you don't really f*** with me. They just want to smell like they do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, look, for the first couple of minutes, we're going to try to refine from using the word. I know. You right, man. My bad, cause it's always that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, oh man, I said it again. I should have just be quiet, man. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this is obviously up. gonna be a challenge, man. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a challenge. Man. Yeah, you know, when you with two real ones, man, it's just a natural thing to say, you know. Hey man, it's all etiquette. good. You know, I mean, if I was sitting here with my grandma and my auntie, then it'd be real easy not to say. <laughs> you said look, with two look, realists, look, it's a natural look, thing to well, say. All respect, dude, like we were just having a conversation. Yeah. We learned from a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my yeah, mama, yeah. my mama be cussing me out all the time. Yeah, I'm talking to me. Yeah. Like, man, what, watch your mouth. I don't want to come to your show. You do too much cussing. I'm like, I got it from you. Exactly. Your show is amazing, brother. Hey, man, like, you keep you. me cracking up. You know what I love about it? It's so hood and it's so rooted. Yeah, yeah. You know, were you born and raised in L.A.? Yeah, I'm a, um, I'm a, I'm a true Long Beach baby. Actually, I was born in Chicago, moved out here when I was three. Yeah, then typical. We, yeah, we moved from Chicago, moved straight to Watts. You know what I mean? Lived in the Nickersons. Shot Town Watts, man. Then left yeah. out, left out the Nickersons, then moved straight to Northside Long Beach, and I've been there ever since. Wow. LBC. Yeah. That's history. That's history, yeah, man. Talk. Hey, LBC, man. What's, what's, shout out Long Beach, man. Yeah. Shout out niggas and everybody else where you hey, people man. always, like people, people people always think I'm from Compton because Big Scratch is from Compton. Oh, and okay. I always tell them the only difference between Compton and Long Beach is Greenleaf. <laughs> <laughs> a street, a, right? Yeah, it's a street. That's yeah, the inside yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't do too, I don't go to the east side that much. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. west side dude. Stay in your lane. Don't disrespect my style. Yeah. I don't know where to be careful at, man. So, Scrancho, let's kick it off, man. How'd you get started in comedy? Man, it's so crazy, man. When I first started doing the comedy, you know, like most most cats, we started in the hood. And and now you think you're funny, you won't get on stage. I said, oh, oh my mama, give me, it's nothing. So the homie come get me. <laughs> Put me on stage, and I knew I, was, but you know, I thought I was bigger than what I really was. I, I, I was funny. I said, I'm going big. I flew my grandmama out. I had my sisters come, family came, the homies came. Man, I, my and my mama let me wear my daddy jacket. My sister made me a braces. I went on stage looking like everybody, right? <laughs> I get on. I get on. I said the other word. But like, I get on stage. Like, <laughs> hey, it's gonna be a lot of bleach. Huh? Hey, as soon as I get on stage, man, I'm gonna tell you something. I ain't never been scared of nothing my whole life. But when you face your gift, mm -hmm. the minute they call my name, bro, it was like walking the death row. Wow. wow. I That's walked crazy. down there, man. Fear jumped in me, man. And and I, I, I got stomach ache, man. Bro. I got on stage all that. Stomach ache. Yeah. I had my little Malcolm X jacket. My mama gave me that. My daddy wore it to wedding. I could have my bracelet. My sister wore. I couldn't think of a joke, man. And my 89 year old grandmama, bless her soul, she was like, "You brought me all the way out here for this." <laughs> Your first <hand. laughs> You funny in that telling joke. <laughs> My brother, no. I told you it wasn't funny. I told you. Oh, oh, it ain't funny. Oh. My little sister, only one like, I love you, brother. You hang in there. We, we have a 
So how'd you regroup from that? How'd you regroup hey, from man, that? I did. I took a loss. I had. <laughs> My bro was like, You ain't riding on with me, you better find your own way. Oh, you got away. I was like, You funny. <laughs> man, I was, I was so embarrassed. Oh, it weird. hurt me so bad. I swear, man, I walked all the way from, from um, Long Beach, <laughs> from Hollywood to, to, to Long Beach. <laughs> <laughs> Just think, thinking about your life. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it hurt me so bad, and it took me about maybe three or four years after that to get back on stage. But that time, next time, I had a strategy. You was ready. Oh, oh, so that's what I want to ask you. So did you start off as like a bagger? Like you thought you was like the coldest dude, could bag on everybody and all that? The reason why I said because AJ Johnson. Yeah. Remember we yeah, should, AJ, we, made, we made AJ, AJ, AJ comedian yeah. almost, bro. Cause he was bagging all the time. We used to yeah. be like, dude, you need to write a routine or something. Yeah, man. AJ is my big homie. Yeah, man. Um, you, you, we all start off bagging, you know, because most black people we naturally funny. Right. We just funny in spirit. But usually, like, if you watch Chris Rock special, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and it was cool. I mean, for a seven special, it was, right. it was decent. But what you could tell at the end when he got to talking about, it was um, it, 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 he didn't recover yet. Right. See, in order for the comedy to really be at its best, you got to heal from what you went through. Mm, that's deep. In order for that mm, to that's mm, resonate. Deep. You see mm, what I'm that's saying? Deep. That's deep. And with Chris, you can still hear the feelings. You can still hear the hurt. You know what I'm saying? And it, and it didn't resonate like it, you know, was more emotional than funny. So, it's like if somebody in your family died, we going through the pain, but then once the pain go away, you be like, man, why didn't they grab up with that wig on looking like that? Exactly. <laughs> and you start talking exactly. about the characters. Exactly. Right. It's there from the time you look, but the right. pain overrode it. So that's just, it's just, you got to heal. So yeah. that's why a lot of cats. Um, so it took some time for you to heal and you was back at it. Yeah, then once I, I, I got over the pain, I understood that comedy is an art. You know what I mean? And I focused on the art of comedy and not just the, you know, the perception of what I thought comedy was. Wow. You know, so it's a real, it's a real beautiful gift to have, well, you know. I got a question. What was your first show you did where you realized, like, damn, I'm on. I'm on. Yeah, and how did that feel? Yeah, how did that feel? Man, you know, the, um. Because as artists, we hear our song on the radio, and we like, we done made it. Yeah, when I first, <laughs> you know, when people first start laughing, man, it bit. I remember it was uh, I did a show, man. I was, and, and it was it was like it was in New York. It was my first time in New York. Yeah, it was in New wow, York. I went and okay. did a show in New York, and it was a and I and I was a. Uh, it was kind of like it was a fear thing because it was during the time of East Coast versus West Coast. I think I know a little something about that. Yeah, and I was like, oh man, I, and I came out there, you know, I'm straight on my dickies, and I got the. You know, the, the house shoes on, and I'm like on some West Coast, real heavy, and I got ready to go to the stage, and it was at the Apollo. And they, oh, they, they, oh, they, oh, was, uh, they was They was already, you know, because the first show, I got booed so bad, because I told Rudy Rush, I said, do not tell them I'm from L.A. Right. Just say from around the way. Right. So I got booed before I even went to the stage. Well, yeah, they said, from, from L.A., y'all know him. And Boo. before they booed. Oh, they go hard, though. They didn't even say my name. They will give it to me. But just you. because I was from L.A., LA it was in the middle it. of beefing. So the second show, I, man, I was so nervous. I said, man, don't say my name. He, I said, don't say where I'm from, right? Mm. So he didn't say where I was from. It's Tracy Session, rest in peace, from Long Beach. Mm -hmm. East yeah. Side Long Beach. He was out there, and he he just popped up out like an angel out of nowhere. And he like, cuz, you know how we do it, you know? He gave it to and you, he yeah. It, he gave, he said, man, you, I got you. Right. And I went out there, and I just smashed. And as soon as I looked over at him, he was like, yeah. That's how and, you do and, it. And from Dope. that point on, Dope. It was, it was, it was, it was, an, it was, I knew I had something different. There we go. You know what I mean? Because. Because you one, made it. You made man, it out there. Because in, in right. New York, I don't care what nobody say. How funny you think you is. If you can't make them laugh in New York. Yeah. You yeah. can't make them laugh. You ain't the one. You ain't, well, you yeah, know, yeah, New York is a key. Similar to the comedy. music. You know, um, New York is the mecca of hip hop. We all know that. And what's crazy is if you can make it in New York, I'm talking about Fall Watts is performing, uh -huh. you know, you got, you pretty much can perform anywhere. Yeah, because New so York, crazy. all the comics, they raw, you know what I'm saying? Right. And when you conquer New York, it was like, man, and now New York is a trip because they hard on you, right. you know, but when they love you, it's a, the love is, is you can't never lose again. Yeah. 
You know, they're going to go hard on you. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because when oh, I yeah. first went to New York to do a show out there, man, I said, wow, they was big. They was born to do it in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man. I remember. Wow. I, remember. I, remember. I, remember. I said, they born in a wheelchair. Yeah. I said, yeah. Me and CJ was talking. I remember back in the days when the New York uh, Music Seminar. Yeah. yeah. It was a couple of groups that wasn't from New York. I ain't going to say no names. Yeah. that went out there. They was throwing shoes at them. They got a chair thrown at them. Hey, you know man. what I'm saying? Hey, man, they raw, but when they love you, man, I swear, man, it's like a no other type of love. You know, I love, and LA love me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it's weird how, you know, um, I could go out of town right. and be selling out everything. Mm -hmm. You know, they love me. I mean, everywhere right, right. I go, it's like, huh, you know what I mean? They get home. I get home, and they treat me like they doing me a favor. Yeah. You know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? And, and, oh, yeah. and oh, then yeah. if I blow up tomorrow, and and I don't mess with nothing in LA, they swear up and down I'm Hollywood. Oh, yeah. yeah. But they yeah, really yeah, went yeah. Hollywood first. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Because the know, cats so that they be embracing out here, they not even at my level. They not even open the acts. But they more comfortable with what they don't know than everything that they think they do know. Oh, so let's talk about the politics of uh, being a comedian. Yeah. A lot of times I hear other comedians say that, you know, it's not like y'all think. Like, we all just be looking out for each other. A lot of times you got to... You know what I'm saying? A lot of times you got to go for self. When outside looking in, it, it seemed like all y'all are be one putting each family, other on. Yeah. yeah, one big family. It, it is like that, but not in L.A. Mm. Like, Damn. you got to remember, man, in L.A., and, and, and I always say people don't realize the, the, how L.A. is because if you think of, well, I was telling y'all this earlier, you know, I always say N.W.A. is the greatest, not just rap group, but the greatest uh, rock and roll group of all times, not right. because of what they did, but because how people went through their brand Come to on, get on. Let me see you talking about that tree. Talked about it yeah, and, and, and right. think about it. With between Easy, Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, and Snoop Dogg. I mean, with the Ice Cube and Dr. Dre, man, guess what? It wouldn't be no Chris Tucker. It wouldn't be no, 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 no. Um, um, um. Cat Williams, it wouldn't be Mike like Morris Epps. Chestnut, right. Mike Epps, it wouldn't be, um, think about, uh, it, it wouldn't be no Suge Knight, it wouldn't be no, it, it wouldn't be no, no Death Row, right. yeah. it wouldn't be no yeah. Bone Thugs, we, right. it wouldn't think be about no the comedy Morris Chestnut, yeah. Yeah, it true. wouldn't even yeah. be, it, yeah. it, it's so many actors that came through that, that, that brand, right. you know what I mean? Right. And then I had to take it, it took me a long time to realize, I know Snoop, talk to Cube all the time. Right. And I, it took me a long time to realize it's not where you're from. It's a business. It's a business. And once you understand it's a business and it's not personal, and then you don't, it don't discourage you and encourage you because they can't put you on because you from the West Coast. Right. It's a business. Right. You know what I mean? Right. A lot of people always ask, Dub, how come you're in the more movies with you? How come you're in the right now? Yeah. If I go out in an audition, you know, and I put, you know, balls to the walls and go out there and just go hard or whatnot and everything, I might be able to fall into some of those. Right. Like, a lot of people think because you cool with somebody, they're supposed to just put you on. Yeah, they don't. It, yeah. it don't. it don't work like this. Yeah. CJ, he's yeah. learning that right now because he's on the writer side, the producer side as well, that you got to work hard, man. You got to work, work hard, hard. man. And you I can, gotta, I can understand what you're and, saying And we got to actually work harder, you know what I mean? Because me and harder. Snoop, we've been knowing each other since childhood. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if you think about all the stuff he put me on, I did movies with Snoop. Right. I put... How much more can he do for me? Right, right, he, yeah, he, right. He, yeah, he, opportunity. He, he share his brand with me all the time. He does, and he's good his dude. family yeah, treat me a like good dude. dude. Yeah, you he know what I mean. And like when the Netflix special came out with all the comedians, and I went yeah, on it, yeah. my phone blew up. Why wow, Snoop they put you on? But they don't understand it's a business. And Snoop, right. you let them use his name, right, to, for the special. Yeah, and when Sarah make Raymaker put the roster together Sarah, uh -huh. yeah you know what i mean i wouldn't include it in the roster but it wasn't personal it was right. business yeah. right you know what i mean and they think because you la you should have been seen maybe i did get overlooked it's common but it's never personal it's never personal it's no, just it business you know right. what i'm saying right and how right. did you how did you get the role and how high you know, I got to go. You know, <laughs> before I even get into the how high, I got to apologize to my boy Mike Epps, right? Okay. Now, okay. keep in mind, Mike is my partner, partner. Yeah. And we talk crazy to each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. And I got on the radio last week. I was like, man, Mike ain't never put, I said, Mike gave me everything, but he ain't never, he, he let me eat, but he ain't never let me get full. Right. But the part they left out is, he did better than let me get full. 
he taught me how to feed myself. You mm. gotta realize it's clickbait. Yeah, it's clickbait. yeah, yeah. A lot, of, it, it, lot of people like they they try they, they try they try to they try to cut it up so they yeah can, they know. cut it up. And, well, and it, well, what, I'm not familiar with what, whatever was going on. Nah, it ain't shout really, out Mike. I love Mike. What love up, you, Mike? So I don't yeah. even know. No, nah, Mike. Yeah. It, it, he didn't. He was just kind of like what? And when I looked at it, I seen how they flipped it. But it wasn't even the way they flipped it, it's the way I said it. Because I was like, they ain't never, Mike ain't never let, you ain't let me eat, but he didn't let me get full, which he didn't, but he let me, taught me how to feed myself. Right, right. And then he, it did not only that, man, if it weren't for Mike Epps, he educated me on how to have proper etiquette. Right. How to act. I right. know how to deal with certain people, certain cultures, and, and because Mike shared his brand right. and let me get that, Mm -hmm. It was dope. But then I was like, you know, then they edited it where I said, I got a joke where I, where I be talking about Hollywood. Yeah. I said, oh, man, they ain't scared of your talent. You know what I mean? They scared of a fire. They don't want me to find out who their boyfriend is, right? Uh, <laughs> so uh, right. they edited they edited that right after I said that, and it made it look like right, I right, was right. talking about Mike Epps. You know, and everybody know that is a 100 real right, one. Right, right, know, that's solid. Yeah, that's a super solid cat, man. And, you know, right. we'd have been to war together, been to, and any time I feel like I disrespect somebody or hurt their brand or right. did anything, because I know in this business you can make a lot of money throwing cats under the bus. Right. That's the right. new hustle. Right. That's just throwing them under the bus. So uh, with me, I don't do my partners like that. And we don't and condone it, that. It, we don't it, condone it, it, that. And yes. if, I, if I was out of pocket, you know, especially like his daughters, they seen it and took it wrong. So not just to Mike, but to his daughters, to wifey. You know, I love that. That's my family, too. You know right. what I'm saying? So to my homie, right. I'm sorry. You know you my partner, and I got to I gotta respect my my friends. You know, it's so, all love. Yeah, it's so anyway, love. just Well, that's what we do here on the Dub C&CJ. <laughs> we try to make the world a better yeah. place to live yeah. here. Yeah. And we're starting off with Scrunch here today. Yeah, Mike and Lil Gaze, he wants to get the fight. He like, he man, we, we, Mike. when I see you, it's all. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah Mike going to keep me straight. Mike going to keep me straight, man. Mike, nah, Mike ain't Shout out, Mike, no. man. Uh, uh, Mike, you Mike. Yeah, yeah Mike you. be ready to get it in. He's ready to throw it back. But I see you scratch us all, man. On that note, on yeah, that note right there, good. before yeah. we go pay some bills, um, I, I'm going to give you some. I'll give you a word of advice, though. Know when you're talking to these people, yeah. it's unfortunate, man, because we can't be ourselves because they go run with it. But know that they, they're, trying to, they're trying to get, they're trying to paint the narrative so they can... They can capitalize. They, they off can capitalize right. off of it. Views. So, you know, everybody want view. Everybody want views, yeah. man. I mean, TMZ hit me up asking me, "Then what do you think about what this person said? That person said this and that or whatever." And your name came up or whatever and everything. I just tell them tune into the Dub C C J Max show. Yeah, yeah, it's all love. You know what I'm saying? If yeah. I can't call to talk to that person personally, I don't trip off of what's going on. Yeah, you know, we like street cast, man. Yeah. I'm very. And I'm very um, overprotective about my name because you say something about me, you might have to catch a fade. You know what I mean? If yeah. it's uh, you trying to destroy my brand, so right. by the same token, I gotta be respectful to if I disrespect somebody's brands. Because so, some of my favorite comedians, you know, I mean, like my favorite probably rapper, you know, I love West Coast. I'm a West Coast. I just like Dub. I always, God, man, you know, Dub was the he the he the uh. He the uh the brick to to the um uh, I look at him like the brick, then I look at Ice Cube like the brain, and I look at, at, at Mac Ten like the player of that right. West Side connection. connection. Right. You know what I mean? You the foundation, Cube the brain, and Mac was the little you know. Right, 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 <laughs> and, right, right, and, right. And, and, and so you always respect the brick, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. And and even with Cube, you know, we talk, he finished. Do my special, you know, okay. but he we're gonna get into that. Yeah. Gonna, so let's let's get some right. bills paid real quick because we got a lot more to say. A lot more to say. Y'all stay tuned to the Dub C and CJ Max show. We With will be boy. right back. Yeah. It's all day. We got work for sale. We got West Side Tees. We got work for sale. We got hoodies like this. We got work for sale. We got work for sale. We got work for sale. We got merch for sale. We're at dubc and cjmac.com. Get it. Get it. You can't open this B-boy shit. Ain't that a bitch? Yeah. 
Welcome back to the Dub C CJ Mack Show. I am Dub C. And I am still and always will be CJ Mack. And we still here with Scrancho. And incredible. Come on, <laughs> y'all. I know. Bro, bro, so you said something that was very interesting because Dub C and I, with this being 50 years of hip hop, yes, Dub sir. C and I just had a show and we were talking about the impact of NWA on music, period. But right. you just brought up a strong point that it even has something to do with uh Actors comedians. and comedians. Yeah. And oh yeah. That that's 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 something that we didn't even think that deep into, man. Most definitely. How powerful that movement was, man. That's incredible. Yeah, man. Come on, think about it, man. Dr. Dre, if you break them down individually, you'll see a you'll see a long line of celebrities each one of those cats brought in. You know what I mean? And if you go through the Q brought in all of the comedians and the actors right. and all the Cats like that. Name, right. Yeah, you know, and I, I had got, I was actually uh, got mad at Chris Tucker because he wouldn't come back and do um, Fridays. I'm like, man, do it, man. Come on, bro. Uh, yeah. I say because because he talked about the money, but the truth of the matter is that was the red door mm. that opened it up for everybody to give you money. Right. So that platform mm. and that red door was worth more money than you could ever make. Wow. So you should never come back and forget. The fact of what they gonna give you or not give mm. you, it's 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 just good business. Yeah, you know what I mean. And Chris told me he said I wanna come back. He real cool, man. He said yeah. he wanna come back, and, I, and it, like it's really not about the money. Right, right. So I, I'm trying to talk him to coming back because that's that's a movie that could never miss. No, not and at it's, all. It's a billion kinda, dollars in the we'll, yeah. Exactly. We like to see that. I, I love, love Chris Tucker. That that's on you. What yeah, up, Chris? Yeah, yeah Chris. So is how cool. did you get the role in How High? Cause that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Over here. Hey man, you know what? Um, I, I talked to Shana Gar. She was my agent at okay. the time, which is the same way with uh, um, uh, the same as a uh, a method man. And she, oh, okay. I had an audition for the role, and uh, Mike originally got me an audition for um, the dude that played the uh, with the with the dot on it. Under uh, he played the the quiet dude that rolled the 10 speed. Ten speed right. Hits for the streets had right, right. Okay. But then oh, yeah, 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 another yeah, cat yeah. who yeah. had the role of uh, uh, the role I played, it was a, a cat named CJ Cross had it, right? Oh, okay. okay. But he got mad because he didn't get th that role uh, auditioned for. So when he didn't get that role, he didn't show up. So Mike Epps was like, go get Scroncho. I want to get Scroncho. He said, matter of fact, I'm going to go get him. And the nigga rolled through the hood and he handpicked me for that Pacific role. Even though Shonda Carr originally got me to audition, right. Mike handpicked me for that role Mike. to be his assistant. Yeah, look at that. You know what I'm saying? Mike got strikes again. It was, my, it, was, it was one of my first big movies, and I was nervous, and he just said, man, just he, he coached me on how to act and just be cool. Right. And the cold part about it, he had, we had sold the, the, when we seen it, when me and Mike seen it, yeah. we looked at it, and we was extremely disappointed because the funniest stuff they cut out they cut out oh, because man. what happened it tested so high our right. characters right that they brought us back in and repaid us pay us more money to shoot the whole end of the movie mm. you know what i'm saying and then and, use a lot of it and then he couldn't use a lot of it because it would have been our movie you know oh. what i'm saying oh that's crazy. Yeah, but we still was able to make it legendary you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And oh, yeah, Pimpin' Sins, Pimpin' Sins, Pimpin' Sins, Pimpin' Sins, Pimpin'. That man said, yeah. see, you come a long line of junior pimps. You come a long line of assistant <laughs> pimps. <laughs> You'll never be another assistant pimp. Not another assistant pimp. Not a now, not a now, not a now, not a now. 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 But it sure sound good. <laughs> so was, how was it on the set? Was a lot of improv? Oh, man, me and my oh, kids. Yeah, man, good question. Me and my chemistry is undeniable. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it's just, you know, you can't, nobody have a real answer for chemistry. Right. Either you got it, you don't. We don't even know. We just work good together on tour and everything. You know what I mean? Even though our our, our roles took different paths and different right. turns, and we still brothers in spirit, and we don't hang like we used to. Right. But we still, you know, it's always genuine love. You there know what I'm saying? And it, it is what it yeah. is. Yeah, so yeah. I think uh, being a comedian in L.A. has got to be tricky because – you know, the attitudes around here be flaring, man. You know yeah, what I mean? But you know, you know, know people don't take the jokes that well yeah, around here. You know, why? You know what I mean? I, I got a joke where back in the days, the world is woke. You know what I'm saying? So back in the days, you couldn't get nobody to sit in front of the 
stage because everybody was scared to get talked about right, so you right, couldn't get nobody right, in the front. Right. Now the world is so woke they with all the smoke. I, I did a show last <laughs> week. It was a dude in the front row. All I, I didn't hardly say nothing to him. He gonna jump on top. I've been waiting. He, jumped, he ain't pulled out his own mic talking I've been waiting on you to say something about me, nigga. Oh, it's going down. Come on with it. I mean, <laughs> come on. You got me messed up. What you gonna do? I said, man, I ain't just saying nothing about how do you, you. How do you deal with hecklers? Um, you know what? It's like uh, it, you can't really never disrespect the person with the mic because yeah, yeah, the mic. yeah I'm a win. Like, <laughs> the mic. And you really, you really feeding into their gift. You know what right. I mean? So when you mess with me, I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, I say all the things I want to say in court to the judge. Right, right, you, know right, right, right. you know, so that's the worst. It's easy to deal with them, but I really don't get a lot of hecklers. Because you, know, you too, I, I yeah, wonder why. Yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, you bagging up. Yeah, up. They, Look, they, I used to have a, uh, when one of my homeboys was standing over there, we used to have a heckling crew. We was having money, we was young, we thought we was cold. We used to go to that comedy store and rip, boy. We used to have people yeah. crying up in there and all that. And I like to tell this story about uh, Eddie Griffin. We tore his ass up his first night in the comedy <laughs> store, bro. We tore his ass hey, up. And he Guess what, though? Went. We came back. Yeah, he was He on said, you. oh, no, I'll put them in the front. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, hey, bro, he dismantled us one by oh, one. He had us arguing with each other. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, oh what was the trap for that? Can we? Oh, bro, it was like, it was like, okay, he ain't to be played oh, with. Man. So you learn as a heckler, bro. I used to be a professional heckler, bro. Oh, man, you got You it. learn as a heckler. Who to play with? Who, 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 play, who not, play, not, play, not to play with? Eddie man. Griffin, man, he embarrassed us so bad. We argued all the way home, bro. Yeah, Eddie is a genius, man. He like <laughs> he, he like one of the most probably underrated comedians in the in the world. Cause it's you can name on I can name on I probably can name three or four comedians. He probably even in the top two. He yeah. man, he his he prolific when it comes yeah. to mind. And he's so brilliant. Wisdom. Man, he's just pure genius, man. Who are some of the comedians that you um you hold like Mount Mount you know, Mount Rushmore and you know when it comes to comedians like who are your top comedians? Well, you know what I'm saying. Um, I, I'm not gonna say Mike Yus because I like him. He's my friend. Right. But you, he he his range. Mm -hmm. He could act, do characters. He don't even do all the characters he can do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He he real. He keep it a thousand. And he really underrated. Right. I love Mike. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love Cat Williams. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cat, shout, shout out to Cat, Cat Williams. Cat, 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 Cat. Cat. You know what I mean? He he another just he we just get you, we gotta get you on the show, Cat. Yeah, Cat is characteristically just hella funny. Mm -hmm. You know awesome what I'm brilliant. saying? And brilliant. And then I'm gonna have to go with like Eddie Murphy because mm -hmm. nobody got his range. Nah. Eddie, Eddie was the first one to put rock and roll in the comedy. Mm. He was the first one to turn turned it into a, a, a rock and roll. He put the mm. fire to comedy. Shows, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. What made, you know. Shows. Yeah. And, and, and Eddie and, and, and always the king, Richard Pryor. Yeah. Hands down. You know what I'm saying? I was for that Richard, name. Richard Pryor is the, you know, he's the one and only king. And, and it's not as, not only because of his, uh, remember, he did watch Stacks. I remember that. He was, it, it, he was in the hood, that. homie. In the hood. He, he always stayed in the hood, and he always, and he was the first one that put, he put all black actors on. Him and, him and, him and um, yeah. uh, Red Fox. Was the friend Red Fox? Yeah. They the Red first Fox ones that said, man, I, if it ain't, they used the N-word. And, and on Johnny Carson and on mm. his shows and check and they was checking he no matter how successful he got and that's why I love our Richard Pryor, Marvin Gaye, and um and and it's a, a couple other but what I love about them, right? They the first artist that was accepted by the they brands was accepted and they crossed over with the white thing. But it was accepted by a mainstream society. Yeah. And they abandoned that and came back to the hood. Hmm. Richard Pryor took off the suit and came back to the hood and kept it grimy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. That's when he got raw. Yeah. Uh, uh, Marvin Gaye took off the doo-wop suit, got with the beard and nappy, and like, what's going on? And yeah. He went raw yeah. with it. And those the cast you I look up to mm -hmm. when they make it to a plateau and come down and and, and deal with cats in the hood. And that's why you got some cats like, uh, you know, or or, or or Eddie Griffin like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? He really a crip. 
You know, he loved, you know, he yeah. really a crip. I didn't know, know that. He a crip, you know what I mean, from Compton. He, what? He, yeah, man, Eddie got real crip ties. No, I didn't know that. For real, for real. So Shout out to Eddie. Eddie, you know, and cats like that, that come back and deal, you know, but some of my favorite comedians love Corey Holcomb, you know Corey, yeah, funny Corey, yeah, we love Corey. Corey. Oh, man. Yeah, Wait, man, let me just. Yeah, Corey. Corey Shout Holcomb out. is probably Dub C's favorite comedian. Oh, man, Corey, right. Corey, yeah, Corey, you want to get on the show, man? man. Hey, man. Hey, I, I love that one joke where he say, Shout out to all the fat bitches that ride dick with T-shirts on. <laughs> Dumb love Corey Hoka, man, because hey, he, he got to talk to the all the time, man. And he raw, he raw. Yeah, he raw, yeah, man. Yeah. And, man. Yeah. and um, you know, and so I, I, I like the raw, raw comics, man, you know. And even when it comes to this comedy, you know, it's, it's less than 2% that could fuck with me. You know, there you go. But nowadays, if you tell the raw truth, you sound like a hater because you're messing nah, up the church's nah, money. No, 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 not at all. But not at if, all. if you take, see, where you get fooled at, you know, if you take away their accolades, their title, their money, their fame, and you know, a lot of these is trash. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, but, you know. That but, being said, what do we got to look forward to coming from Scratch Up? <laughs> like you tell, they tell the raw truth, you sound like a hater. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'll tell you who the rawest female comedian out. Who? Some more. Some more. You yeah, gotta she's see she's, her she's, Netflix yeah. special. Yeah, Shout out cold. to some more. Man, Shout out to some more. She be cold. Have ma she not just probably got the hottest Netflix special as a female, but as a male too? Because you gotta look at she top man. Look at for she mastered geniusly the art of comedy. You know mm. what I'm saying? And when she got on there, man, her Netflix special had me laughing from beginning to end. I had to call her and tell. Her, I was respectful. I called her husband and told him, man, that's yeah. the funniest. Yes, sir. That's why I didn't see this wow. period. Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. If y'all yes, don't sir. see some more special, you better go see it because the master art of comedy, she mastered it. Well, let's take one more break, and we're going to come back and talk to you about what you got going on okay. here in the new, near future and what we have to look forward to. So we'll be right back. Stay tuned. We'll be right back, y'all. <laughs> We got work for sale. We got West Side Tees. We got work for sale. We got hoodies like this. We got work for sale. We got work for sale. We got work for sale. We got merch for sale. Where at? Dub C and CJMac.com. Get it. Get it. You can't throw this B-boy shit. Ain't that a bitch? Yeah. Welcome back to the Dub C and CJ Mack show. I'm still CJ Mack, believe it or not. Yeah, and I'm Dub C still sitting right here with the homeboy Scrunch, y'all. Yes, yes, yes. So Scrunch, yeah, man, yeah. thank you for coming today, man, and sharing stuff with us, man, and a bunch of dropping jewels. Right. Being a man, you know what I mean, Absolutely. about some things and promoting what we promote, man. Yeah. Making, uh, making this place a better place for all of us, man. Yeah. And getting along around here as best we can. Yeah. Um, what are we looking forward to out of you in the future? I got a... Um, Actually, um, I'm in negotiation to do my special. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm going to do a documentary comedy special. So the first 30 minutes going to go into my documentary and basically a West Coast version mm -hmm. of it. You know, and then I'm going to merge straight into my comedy. That's dope. You know what I mean? I'm, because, glad, I'm, I'm glad you came out here and you stayed at first what you was going to do. But you know niggas be biting, right? Yeah, of course they should. They should bite. But you know what? The one thing they can't bite is me. There you go. Because I'm the best at being me. Yeah, and, and nobody can't top me when I'm on stage. I'm the best at what I do. You know what I'm saying? And at the time, it don't matter who's better, who you think is better. At that moment, when the mic is in my hand, the one thing I know I did, I mastered this art of comedy. What I love about you is your confidence. Yeah. I love um, that, you know, in this business right here, we got to be our biggest cheerleaders. Yeah. We got to root for ourselves bigger, you know, harder than anybody else root for us because if, you know, they say squeaky wheel, get the oil. And if we don't speak up, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people are not going to yeah. listen. We get lost in the sauce. Yep. With all that being said, man, I appreciate you. And um, and w it, this interview is, is more than just an interview to me. It's special because we, um, me and you both in the physical essence lost somebody that was dear to us. Yeah. Monster. Yeah, Monster is it's like Monster, rest in peace. Man, that is, the, um, he is like the big homie and the backbone of my brand because when I met Monster, he sat down and he loved everything about my comedy, mm -hmm. everything. But one thing he taught me was etiquette, how to deal with, um, you know, um, rejection, the, people saying no, and the goofies, and, yeah, and the weirdos. Weirdo. And, and, and he educated me that because I had a mentality 
that was hurting me more than blessing me because I didn't know how to navigate it. Right. And then uh, I've been doing them since I was a little dude. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I didn't know that. And then once, yes, yeah, so a little dude, we met in um, Carmelito. The Carmelito. Yeah, yeah. yeah. in the Lido's. And my star. sister stayed yeah. next door. And then um, he stayed on the other, uh, his, he used to mess with Dee Dee, the homegirls. And, yeah. and I came over there and one day we were shooting dice. And niggas pulled up, I pulled up, and we just talked and we kicked it in. Yeah. And we just, and we bonded from that point. Then I seen him in prison. And I see, and then we just been, and he always, he was always there for me. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And and years and years I knew him, but he had to wait for the time was right to bring me to Ice Cube. Right, right. Star. Yeah. For those who don't know who Monster is, Monster was he was he was a homeboy from the hood, but also too he got down and he became one of the security guards for Ice Cube. Yeah. And he always pushed for you. Anytime he was always, on the two of us were around us, he always pushed yep. for you. And, and Cube promised me. You know what I mean? Well, he, we and right before Monster passed, mm-hmm. we was scheduled to do the special. Wow! Yeah, Cuban suit had um, Monster set it up, and he had the special between me, Cube, and Snoop. He set oh. me in a room with him, and it was like it was a it was a, a dream, like a dream, dream come true. And, and me and that nigga, man, we cried. He's like, I told you, Cube gonna mess with you. And me yeah. and Cube talked to this day. Yeah. And um, cause Cube didn't know. Cube didn't know I don't smoke, drink, right. get high, do right. drugs, get yeah, I don't do nothing. So he, that shocked him. You know what I mean? So and, and to this day, me and Cube in negotiation to do my special. There we go. And um, even if it don't go, just the fact that Cube. You know, keep your mind. Keep he got you. Mind. Yeah. Well, let's keep yeah. that saying confidence. Oh, that, yeah. It's gonna happen. Yeah, we're gonna Any tours happen, or man. anything like that scheduled? Yeah, matter of fact, man, y'all gotta come. I'm doing a um Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday. I'm doing my second annual woman empowerment, all clean okay. comedy show with an all female lineup except me. And it's called Loyalty Over Love. Okay. Because of our loyalty, love is just a hustle. Mm. And it's just uplifting the woman. And it's clean and it's refreshing. It's gonna be at the City of Refuge Easter Sunday. Tickets on sale. You go to the City of Refuge, you get the tickets. It's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna bring my A game out. My mama gonna be there. Grandmama gonna Shout be out there. The moms, yeah. yeah, and um, you bring your mother, bring your grandmother, bring your daughter, bring your aunties. It's a time where all women need to be uplifted because right now, women is being really just brutalize and getting they getting the bad short ends of the deal yeah. and I just want to make them feel good. It takes a man though to do that though so we can make never, sure you bring your clean overlook, clothes. We can never overlook be, the men as well. Make sure you exactly. bring your clean clothes because Scruncho says it's going to be a clean show. Yeah. Because he's got to be talking about the clothing and not what his the mouth. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Oh, God, he's got to be talking about hey, the you clothes know what? you wear. And I tell people all the time, comedy, <laughs> as much as they want to know it, comedy it has it's it's a spirit. And when you got that spirit of laughter, you don't have to cuss. You know, I don't do sex jokes. No. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't do no sex jokes because it's so much. It's so much to say right. that when you do the sex jokes, you cheating it. You got, right. you, got to, you got so much, man, you got to go through something. Right. And when you could go, I live so much. Man, if I make, I got the average, he go the way comedy go. First special is fire. Everybody hungry, broke. Right. Every, bam. Then the second special is half as funny because now you got some money, now you got some fame, <laughs> got some accolades, now you have Just like fun. rap. <laughs> like, now your third special is completely trash. You talking about your money, and I go, on. now you own your ego. Right. You know what I'm saying? And the average comedian never do the fourth one. Mm. I say that to say this. If I blow up tomorrow, I got five specials in me. Wow. At least. I got a monologue, a catalog full of jokes. Nobody got more material than me in comedy. And I've been on this stage every, minus the four years I was in prison. Yeah. <laughs> I've been on stage from Monday through Sunday four or five times wow. of a night sometimes. That's crazy. I've been a microphone junkie. That's you know crazy. And I made, my, I made it an addiction. And when I grab that mic, it's a wrap. You know what I mean? I ain't got to talk about nobody except everything I've been through. Well, y'all and, heard it. Yeah, you. Y'all and, heard it. Y'all heard it. Y'all see it right here. Right y'all, here y'all, homie. Y'all, hey, y'all come out support the homie. Any and everything. Easter Sunday, man. Come through Bishop Noah Jones. Easter Sunday. You know what I'm saying? In the City of Refuge. And Jay Lamont going to be hosting. I got Wanda White, Rita Jones, Kathy Winfield, all women. And I'm going to come in and just close the show. Well, you already here. Hey. 
Thank you for coming, brother, and we appreciate, appreciate you, man. man. I appreciate y'all. Hey, good luck. Good luck. Oh, 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 great to have my home team here. Yeah, my us, mama, man. mama, which, yeah. Is, yeah. which is my grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> good luck with all your projects, man. <laughs> And we got to get you back on the show as well a little bit later down. Hey man, oh my mom, it's been an honor, and being here is an honor because you know I watch y'all, man, and just be just for y'all to know who my brand is because I was a I was a, I was a fan of y'all way before y'all even know who I was, and to be here with y'all is more of an honor to me, man. This is just as big as I swear, man. This is like I came out here specifically for this show. Appreciate you because y'all West Coast legends. Y'all respected in the industry. Y'all respected on all level, all aspects. And, and for y'all to go this long and be sucker free, yeah, you know what I mean? It's ten toes down. Yeah. Man, it's unbelievable. And I'm my, part of just for y'all including my brand with y'all brand, man. It's price. Anytime y'all ask me to come appreciate back, it. man, I'm coming. Yeah, we definitely yeah. going to get you back on here. We're going to get you back on there. And I'm paying for my own parking. I don't need nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I got the damn three dollars. Yeah, I'm paying for the whole parking, everything, you know, everything. Yo, Thank y'all for tuning in to another Pop Pack episode of the Dub C and C J Mac Show with Comedian Scrunch Show. I am C J Mac and I am Dub C. <laughs> Peace. Peace. We out here. Thank y'all.